we're back. Map to Africa. So today we're speaking to Helian Miller. Um, I must uh, confess that uh, you and my wife Anneli are cousins. And um, I've sidetracked you because you went to the mountains this morning to <laughs> look for snow. And uh, on your way kind of home, I sidetracked you and asked you to do a podcast with me. So I apologize for hijacking uh, hijacking your, your afternoon. I was kind of on my way to my bed. <laughs> <laughs> Those are of, of, um, of, of, of you listening, uh, Helene, you're a, a doctor. Yes. Yes. Okay. Everyone knows what doctors do, but you're currently a almost not a part-time doctor, but you were roped in for a three-month contract. Yeah. So um, I have a three-month contract at a field hospital in Kalicha. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, just assisting the Kalicha District Hospital with the COVID overflow. I see. Um, yeah. So it's until end of August. Mm -hmm. But it seems like we're kind of over the the bump now in terms of COVID, specifically in Kalicha. Okay, yeah. that's fantastic to hear. You, you you mentioned that your your hospital has a capacity of how many? Um, beds? so it's sixty beds, but we actually never filled up to okay. sixty. We went to around fifty, and then things went. I want to say downhill, but that sounds like things went got worse. Got yeah, worse. Yeah. It got better. We okay. got less patients. <laughs> and yeah. there, there is a trend to why I actually wanted to speak to you because I've I've traveled a little bit um, previously and and through Southeast Asia and understand how sort of fantastic it is and you know I've I've had a lot of friends, including yourself and your partner Mariel, that that returned uh, from from short. Uh, sort of plans to travel internationally. Yeah, you guys were doing a trip through Vietnam. Yeah, so actually, we were planning to take almost the whole year off. Mm -hmm. Twenty twenty, that was supposed to be the year. <laughs> um, but so we started off in Vietnam. Um, kind of wanted to do a bit of Southeast Asia, and then um, in what would that have been like? is it spring now go to um, Nepal and then oh, India from there mm -hmm. so it was actually a <laughs> whole big trip that didn't happen but yeah mm -hmm. so we only um, ended up only doing Vietnam so we basically cycled from don't say basically because you guys cycled a huge amount of <laughs> <laughs> So we, we, idea. It wasn't a small trip. Okay, so we cycled um, from Hanoi to Ho Chi Minh City. Wow, yeah. okay. It, it's called a Highland Pass, eh? Uh, it's it's or like, of it yeah, pass. yeah. It's okay. like in the middle, basically, the Highland awesome. Pass. Um, yeah, so I'm very happy we actually got to finish that hmm. whole trip before Corona kind of pushed us home. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. and what kind of distances did you cover? Um... So mostly, I would say 80 to 150 k's a day. Right. Um, most days around 110 to 120. Um, and then depending um, where we wanted to go a little bit less. We started off with like 60, but then... As you progress, you yeah, get fitter. It's yeah. The first day, 60 felt like a million miles. <laughs> And you're also sorting out your gear and getting comfortable with your bikes. Yeah. Because you bought the bikes there, I assume. Yeah, we bought the bikes. We spent like, I think, two or three days, like, kind of shopping around. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of, we kind of had to decide between buying, like, a cheap um, Chinese mountain bike, a new mountain bike, or, like, a second-hand road bike. I see. Um, and we knew the roads weren't only going to be tar and straightforward mm. but at the end of the day the the road bikes kind of won out <laughs> because the quality of those chinese bikes are a bit yes I don't I've, know, heard, doubtful. I've, heard, <laughs> I've heard you you shouldn't really rely on and trust that everything's gonna because no. I mean, even even just buying the tubes i had a i read a, a blog post from uh, two friends of mine yana and someone but i i, I say her name because i she's a Occupational therapist, either you know or Hanley knows her. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not I sure. I think Hanley knows yeah. her. Um, but they 
her and her husband uh, cycled through Lesotho yeah. and they could often only find tubes like Chinese manufactured yeah. tubes and they just wouldn't last and you know, they just puncture all the time yeah. and you'd have to keep replacing yeah. them and stuff like that. So exactly the same experience. A second hand kind of rally or something that you can uh, build up that even though it's old as long as the, the gears yeah. look okay yeah. you'll be alright. So. Yeah so the bikes we end up um, buying was I can't remember the name now, but it was some kind of Japanese touring bike. Um, okay. With... Schwen, or... No, no, that's Swedish. Yeah, Don't no. you look like a Swedish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, um, but it had seven gears, basically. Um, okay. And yeah, it didn't really give us any problems except for the tubes, because our tubes, I think, after maybe two or three weeks, I had a puncture, and then we bought new. Um, tubes and then literally put in a new one went 5k's puncture, mm. took it out put in the next one, went 100 meters it just kind of like disintegrated <laughs> <laughs> so that was a disaster <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, shout out to Johan Janse van Vieren, our ranger um, we want to do a trip from uh, from here to uh, Limpopo and then peak all the highest mountains as well. So cycle through each province and then the highest mountain in each of those yeah. provinces do that. Uh, that would be amazing. I'm really looking forward to it uh, when it ever, or if it ever materializes. Um, I'm trying to pressure him into doing it sooner than, than later because, you know, now as soon as interprovincial travel opens up again, I think they'll, they'll, uh, it'll be a good opportunity yeah, to do that because we're not as busy. South Africa, I think, is a really good country to mm. cycle through. And you've, you've lived in a couple of provinces during what was your, I don't know how doc, doctors structure their, their their community service year and then you have a practical year or something like that? Yeah, so you study six years, that was at Stellenbosch. Mm -hmm. um, and then in that time we do do some kind, like some parts we to go to different places. They're just trying to spread the students around so that mm -hmm. everyone can get some experience. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that would be like four weeks in one place. Okay. Um, so I did spend some time like in Muscle Bay and nice. like that. And then after that, you do two years of internship, which is kind of still kind of training, but you do earn a proper salary and mm -hmm. you are working and, but you still need to have supervision and you kind of have to do all the different um, departments. Like mm -hmm. you have to spend time in surgery and internal medicine and pediatrics and everything. Um, Two part question. Yeah. What was your favorite department? <laughs> <laughs> and then the second part, yeah. uh, favorite location that you've actually worked in. Okay. Um, so first, oh. <laughs> I don't know what's happening now. Right. Um, so my favorite department in internship, I think, was family medicine and pediatrics, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so family medicine, I think people would understand it if I say it's like GP, basically. Okay. So it's more clinics, and but in, in internship, it's mixed with EC work. What's um, EC work? So, um, like, emergency room, kind of. Oh, I see. Okay, um, cool. So, I actually like that because you kind of get a patient, sort them out, they go home. It's mm -hmm. not your problem anymore. Okay. Or you send them to the next department. Okay. And then also part of that was psychiatry. And I actually also enjoy psychiatry. Oh, really? Um, I'll stop talking now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't analyze everything. No, no. I don't know. It's... it's I enjoyed it, but I could see that it's a very frustrating, um, especially in, in the state, it's a frustrating um, place to work in. I see. Because, yeah, it's something that gets, the government doesn't really pay attention or give any money or resources to it. Which is crazy. I yeah. mean, if, if you look now, especially during this sort of current state um, pandemic, how many people actually, you read the stats, and I know stats are often, you know, you take them with a pinch of salt, yeah. but... One of the, the drastic increases that, that are very prevalent is, is medical uh, or mental health. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and how that skyrocketed. I mean, I've seen it myself. I, I, don't, I haven't been to psychiatrists or, or, or psychologists a lot. But yeah. During this time, you know, you cooped up, you're in a house, um, especially in a, in a young relationship. I've been married for three or four years. Yeah. You know, the, the things that weren't problems before 
if you don't have an outlet like yeah. in mountains or getting outside, you know, you, you need those people to speak to, to, to share the frustrations and help you cope with uh, other mechanisms. It's a good thing yeah. and a bad thing, I suppose, yeah. but it's crazy that it, there's, there's not more funding for that no, um, I, in, yeah. in, in, in public hospitals. No, exactly. And I mean, a lot of people don't have any coping skills or mechanisms. So. Mm. Yeah, but so I enjoyed that and then pediatrics, yeah, I don't know, it's it's nice to work with kids because mostly you get a better outcome or there's mostly a more positive outcome. Okay. I mean, most kids do recover from whatever. They're quite durable <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, so, to, to yeah, survive. Not always, but yeah. you kind of, yeah, uh, and the patients you... are cute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I look, I, I've often, Honey worked in, in Lesotho for a while and, and she worked with a lot of, of kids, more malnutrition. Um, yeah. And I don't know how you guys deal with those kinds of environments um, for, for that amount of time. Do you get training during your studies to separate patients, the, the job, and then also, you know, the, the feelings of what you're going through in that environment? A little bit, yes. They do try to kind of um, teach you a bit of like life skills. Um, we had like a module or, you know, I guess it's a module in fifth year through to sixth year doctors as agents of change. Okay. <laughs> so in that, they tried to put like all this, even like, there was, I remember there was even some kind of lecture about like finances, like how to manage your personal finances oh, right. and more things like that. Mm -hmm. um, even, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing now because when you're like, now I can laugh about it, but it's like the worst when you're at varsity <laughs> and you have to do all these assignments about what you deem not like important, important. stuff. Until it is important. Yeah, to us, yeah. But like one of the things I remember you had to make this big project about setting goals and so you had to physically say, um I think there was different categories, but now you have to set all these goals and then you have to have a plan for how are you gonna reach these goals and then you have to give proof <laughs> of how you reach so if I said um even I, you could say stuff like, I want to run a 10K, I don't know, in 40 minutes, mm -hmm. whatever, and then submit my race results or something really? like that. Or like... Do you know what really irritates me about your family? Yeah. You're like, something easy like running a 10K in 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it drives me mad because I need no, that to me all the time. No. And I'm like, I just want to run a 10K and I'm going to No, I can't run a 10 I've never run a 10K in 40 minutes. That Don't would be a good goal me. for me. You're, you're, you're a much better athlete than you, you, you put out to be. Uh, I've heard you've done some big races before and done fairly well. Yeah, but yeah. I <laughs> so, I feel like the ones I do well in because there's no one else that oh, actually worked in the <laughs> But I, I think it, it's also, um, I, and I'm not speaking for you, I, ho I hope you don't take it that way, but uh -uh. For, for Honey, it's, you know, there's there's that release from work or personal life or, or, or frustrations or, you know, just any, any sort of release that you need has always been in the outdoors or in the mountains. And I... Um, I remember we did a, a race in Lesotho and I, it was embarrassing. Hanley finished and I had uh, listeriosis. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not blaming listeriosis for me finishing far behind her. <laughs> She's a much better athlete than yeah. I am. But I, I finished uh, after about seven and a half, almost eight hours in the mountains. It was, it was only a 40k, but it was brutal. Um, you climb... There was a lot of uh, climbing and descending and climbing and descending, but it was beautiful. You you sort of climb up, and then when you're on the escarpment, uh, it started snowing, and so you, you're you running, and like you start at 30 degrees, run up, and then it's snow for about three or four hours, and then oh, wow. you drop down again, and you're back in the sunshine. It's yeah. fantastic, but it was the Lesotho Ultra Trail. And when I finished, uh, the race director was like, and Peter, welcome across the line. Uh, your wife's been waiting for you for the past two hours. Uh, oh. She finished. Could you wow. meet her? She's worried about you. <laughs> Dude, come on, it's my fame. <laughs> I've just achieved my first 40k and you made me feel tiny. <laughs> but but um, how, how do you use the outdoors as a release and, and kind of, I mean, a lot of people do, but but I've, I've seen and, and obviously spoken to you a lot about, you know, your, your love for the outdoors, but uh, what, what, how do you balance that with work and how do you, 
uh, use that as a release, I suppose. I mean, yeah, so I definitely do that. I don't actually, I guess, have any other way to kind of, I think it just started with, um, I started running like start of high school. Mm -hmm. um, and since then, it's just been the way I've been coping with stress and mm. it kind of, yeah, feels like the that's also uh, I feel like sometimes it get a bit it's a bit pathological because sometimes I get stressed out because I'm not outside yeah. <laughs> so if I'm at my at my house and I can't do something outside I, I, or it's FOMO I don't know but sometimes I feel like that stresses me out actually <laughs> <laughs> No. The, the act of not doing the <laughs> yeah. thing that's supposed <laughs> yeah. to be making feel better. Yeah. Um, no, but... Sure, no, I forgot the other part of your question. The other part of my question... I took you on a weird tangent, yeah. but I apologize. Um, so, so favorite departments were psychology and peds? Yeah. Uh, it is peds. Fa right? Yeah, family uh, meds. Peds family peds. meds and peds, okay. And, um, and then your favorite location that you worked in? Oh, yes. Um... Okay, so basically, so that was internship. Then after internship, you have to do community service. So mm -hmm. that's just one year you have to work for the government um, before you can do whatever else you want. Um, before you're a qualified doctor. Yeah, so so you actually, so after internship, you could potentially, you are qualified in a way. You could go to another country and work there. I see. You don't need community service. It's just a South African thing. Um where after only after that you can work in uh, in private if you want to. Okay. Um, but it's not a requirement for other countries. I see. Um, so a lot of people leave the country before that, but then it's difficult to return because you always you work here because you need yeah, to do that. You owe the country mm. that year. I see. Um, yeah. So that for community service, I ended up in Bukit Bar, oh. um, which yeah you know, wasn't what I expected. I kind of <laughs> I kind of thought. Because um, you always hear, like, oh, it's difficult to get in the Western Cape. So I kind of thought, okay, um, it would be nice to be in the Eastern Cape, in, like, the Wild Coast, yes. or, like, close to the Drakensberg. Mm. So I put hospitals there on, and then I got to get back, Western Cape, which <laughs> kind which of grew up in, was a little bit disappointing. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you have, you take what you get. I really can't complain about that. Mm. Um, but I think... The best place I worked in was definitely Nalsprate. Okay. Um, just in terms of the work and free time balance was really good there. Mm. And I've never been there before I moved up there. So there was a lot of exploring to do, which yes. was really cool. Yeah. Um, I remember doing a trip to Vatswab with and, and then yeah, you guys joined yeah. us. And my ankle was still broken. And you, <laughs> <laughs> you led all the routes. Uh, we did... Uh, a route that was supposed to be a 13, but it didn't feel like a 13. Yeah. <laughs> it was terrifying. And uh, I have a very fond memory of you climbing, and then you were leading the route. I was second, yeah. and you were climbing with people that had never climbed before. Yeah. Uh, Joe and... And Carla, probably. Carla, Carla. Yeah. And um, Carla got up to me, uh, and he looked into my eyes, and he was terrified. And he's like... <laughs> Helene's hardcore, right? She's so cool. She can climb really, really well, right? She's fine. She'll be okay. And then he looks up to you and, and, and you were kind of, you weren't freaking out or anything, but it was a tricky route, yeah. that, especially that second section. But I remember looking up, that was hilarious in itself. But then you had my moon boot for my broken ankle strapped to your back. And I was like, oh, this is a fond memory and I something remember, I've never forgotten. I, I, was, I was, but now I remember it's where you go. It was like a two pictures. Yes, yeah. Yeah, you know, we two were pictures. coming out of that canyon thing. We hiked down yeah. into a canyon yeah. and then uh, we, we got out. I think it was a 13 or 14. But yeah. We had, I think, a party of six or seven people that we had to yeah. pull up. Yeah. And, uh, and you and I were the only two that want, could really yeah. lead the route. Uh, so we kind of just shuttled people up and down. It was an interesting day and, and a fond memory for me. But I, I love that area as well. Honey did a community service here in, in close to Lesotho, but we'd go through to Buerfin maybe three or four times. Yeah. Um, and it's not that far. It's about a six or seven hour trip. Yeah. But, but we love that area. Sorry, I hijacked. And we, no, did, a, we no. did a second trip where we visited you cycling there and... It's all very yeah, yeah. Um, we went um, we went to Mankere as well. 
Did that... we recycle at Minkele, that mountain bike park outside yes. our spray? Yes, yeah, that was amazing. And we cycled at Waterworld Woofen as well. You cycled with the moon boot, I remember I cycled that. With the moon boot, I know. <laughs> Chef yeah. Honey had a lot to put up with. She, but she, she actually got a, she got very, very strong at swimming because we would uh, often we go climbing somewhere. I couldn't really climb that much, um, so we would swim and we would break up our. We'd always go past uh, Stadfontein Dam. Uh, and use that as our sort of stop off point before yeah. we got home. So we get at like four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I put my moon boot on, and then uh, she'd tie her harness around her waist yeah. and then pull me. And we'd swim like a, a K or two yeah. through the dam. And yeah. then she got really, really strong, and we, we still managed to get stuff done. Yeah. Uh, you broke your ankle recently. Well, not recently, yeah. but maybe a year ago. Or? Yeah, no. So I didn't. It was actually on a trip with you. <laughs> um, that, so um, I think it was 2017 we went to the Drakensberg. Um, I, yes. I went with Joe to the, so a friend of mine to the Drakensberg mm -hmm. um, for a few days. Um, just did some trail running and hiking. And you then, did Cathedral Peak area, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And Sentinel, I think we did Sentinel. Oh, Sentinel Peak. Or up to the together something like that yes okay um, that's central people yeah. up to uh, chain ladders yeah to, yeah. yeah okay um and then we joined you guys in golden gate that's right and then we did that we we just ran through the felt basically and you were throwing both trawlers <laughs> 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 I remember that there, there, were, there were big uh, dung piles of yeah. wildebeest, and and we, we we actually got really close to wildebeest yeah, and zebra yeah. and hartebeest, yeah. um, and uh, yeah, that was great. I don't know why more people don't run there because you yeah. can just kind of. That was a very very uh, cool run. It I remember was, that yeah. We we did like two or three peaks, and then on the way down you. Yeah. So your ankle. so we kind of. You we... were in the front all the time. <laughs> I remember that, and then Andy and I were running at the back. <laughs> So we were, I remember we, we wanted to go on this trail, but we didn't really find it. So we we're just doing whatever and we decided to go up a peak and mm. then another one. And then when I was running down, um, I kind of slipped on loose rocks. Mm -hmm. And so I slipped downhill and fell and my ankle sprained all at the same time. So Ish. it was a lot of kind of impact. So I, I think it's there that, so I tore the lateral ligaments of my ankle mm -hmm. um but i didn't really because i i i have oh i had similar um Falls kind of injuries before and it did recover so I, I didn't really think it was more a uh, more of a bigger injury than before <laughs> and i remember at that time my ankle was really painful and you guys <laughs> were like a, I want to say Anna, I mean, you were like hanging around and I was like, this is painful, I just want to get to camp. So I literally ran as fast as I could home. I remember because we were trying to keep up with you and like you, but you were way out of here. I was just, it was just like, I can't take this anymore, I just want to get this over, which was probably not <laughs> the best idea. No. It's interesting because I'm very clean and that yeah. helps me sometimes because yeah. I blow things out of yeah. proportion and then people help me. Yeah. Why do you keep it all in? <laughs> I don't know. I suppose it's just the way that you cope with um, these kinds of things, you yeah. internalize them. Uh, yeah, I, I always think, no, there's a worse, there's a worse problem like this than this. Mm. So, but so it, it did heal, but then from there on out, I just started spraining my ankle like very regularly. I see. Like if I went on a two day hike on the second day, like 100 meters from the car, I'll get an ankle sprain. Ah. <laughs> so, and then it's two weeks of resting, resting and, recovery, yeah. and then i started worrying that i might be just messing up my ankle joint um so eventually figured out that it's that i tore the ligaments two years later when they opened up my ankle um yeah so got a repair um and then took yeah i think i was in in um a cast for two weeks and in moon boot for six weeks mm. Um, yeah. Also cycling with a moon boot on, I remember. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because everyone gave me nonsense. They're like, you cycling with a moon boot, you can't do it. But you can't just sit still no. and not do anything. Yeah. It's, it's frustrating. I mean, maybe for a week while it's still tense. Yeah, and, yeah. And, or two weeks while it's still really sore from the yeah. surgery. But after that, you know, you've yeah. got to do something. Yeah, no, you and have to get going. It's not high impact cycling as long as it's on easy yeah, terrain no. and stuff. As long as you don't fall 
yes. on that side, I think. Yeah. So not mm-hmm. mountain biking really. Well, you did mountain biking. I did. And I fell a lot. Because <laughs> you can't... I mean, it, yeah. Not, the, yeah. not the, the most intelligent thing to do. But I, I think, you know, you use being outdoors as an escape. And if you don't get that escape, you really struggle. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, uh, uh, probably a lot of people will, will be able to relate. Shane, a friend of mine, he, he does uh, unicycling. Yeah. And he just did a small jump. I, th- I think this is the correct story. But yeah. a small little, he just went off a little platform on his unicycle and stepped down it. And snapped his ankle oh, completely. No. And he's just, I don't know if he's going to get it fused or, or what, but Shit. it looks, t- it's massive. Like, and he's a mountain guide. So, you know. Yeah, I'm, I don't know why our ankles are designed like this. It's like this tiny little thing. <laughs> they carry, <laughs> in my case, a lot of weight. And um, yeah, I don't, they, they seem to be quite fickle but a lot of balance exercises help yeah are you strengthening your ex- ankles yeah then? so recently i've not been doing it that much <laughs> especially it's always difficult when you change jobs and you kind of kind of adjusting and then kind of strength training and rehab goes out the window yeah. <laughs> and it's easiest just to go out and run mm. um but yeah it does help i think that's the biggest thing is to try and trust your broken or injured ligament and ah, limb again how do you separate sort of the because obviously when you hurt your ankle if, if a patient came to you and said yeah. look this is what i happened uh this is how long i've been spraining it yeah. should i still run you would have, i mean consult the patient you probably say it's it's better to get it checked out and not run but you still ran on it so how do you how do you balance that sort of the no versus the want to do the the activity i don't know i think of yourself you you don't really you might know but it doesn't imply to you (laughs) i don't know i think i don't know if it's the experience that other people have but it's a lot of things that i supposedly know but i mean it's like how many doctors smokes and that it's that kind of thing yes yeah you know and you see people i don't know with copd or dying of lung cancer but it yeah i get it yeah i think i think it's often harder when it's you um, yeah. experiencing it versus you telling someone yeah 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 um, I, I don't know if you if you listened but we did a podcast on the um on the drakensberg traverse that we did I'm not there yet. I'm like at the... Okay, I'm not the... pushing you into it. <laughs> what I wanted to ask you is, would you ever consider running it? I would, but sure, I think there's a lot of planning that needs to go into that. Mm. And training. Training, yes. I think um, just the preparation to, to be able to do, because it's 210 kilometers. But if you do it light, um, I'm thinking of, of trying to rope Willem and Johan into it. And then Honey's not interested in yeah. doing it again. Um we want to we want to do maybe a four or five day kind of fast packing yeah. small packs uh, maybe one bivy in in case you don't find a cave yeah. and then just planning to sleep over for a couple of hours on caves and then having food drop offs yeah um so yeah. you're keen that sounds insane it'll <laughs> be cool though yeah uh, in in a couple of years though yeah. i don't think we're anywhere close to well i'm definitely not fit enough to be able to do something like that but does that interest you at all i mean have you done adventures like that so uh, not completely like that no. mm-hmm. um but i mean i think maybe uh, it's only one day but i've done like the yonkersuk um marathon oh nice um well i've had like one failed attempt and okay. <laughs> one full one mm-hmm. um which is also quite cool but i guess you you also kind of have to but i don't know if it's the same anymore because I think recently a lot of people have been doing it, so mm. I think it's easier to just follow the route. The or, route. Um, but at that time, I sound old now, when I was still studying, <laughs> you supposedly had to like go and scout the whole thing before you do, like the find out the route, FKT and attempt. then mm. you do it. Um, yeah. Because didn't Samuel hold the FKT for a Yeah, long time I actually did it with Samuel. Not that time. Oh, I did right, it with okay. Samuel another time. <laughs> I thought you did it with him. I was like, what? I didn't know that. <laughs> no. Oh. No. Um, we, we were actually four. It was me and Andrew and Samuel and someone else. I can't remember. But they got I sick. I hope they don't listen. Because <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I, get this. I don't know. 
weird. I think it's the first time I met that person. I oh, mean, okay. they they got sick halfway, so they went down at Bushman's. What? Is it Bushman's neck? I uh, think. On the GT? No, no. On Yonkersuk. Oh, no, no, no. I, yeah. don't, I don't know. It. Um, yeah. Bushman's neck's the end of, of, of the GT, but I, I don't yeah. know Yonkersuk that well. Doesn't it? No, I'm confused. I think it's up. But anyways, hmm. so it's almost like halfway, basically. Okay. How far um, is it? Is it a... It's, it's less than... It's around 40 k's, I think, okay, less cool. than 40, but um, it's a lot of climbing and mm. there's not always a route. It's like you have to check where the cones are and things like that. Yeah. So it does, I think the record's now like just below eight hours. Oh, really? Yeah. Sure. So it, it... It's very different doing these kinds of things in the Cape versus Cousin Natal in the Drakensberg. The Drakensberg is high yeah. and the, the weather plays a big yeah. role and, and I'm sure the Cape does as well. but. It's it's off trail on the Cape is with a fan boss yeah. and the rugged rocks yeah. and it's a lot different. So yeah. so like forty k's in the Drakensberg versus forty k's yeah are two different things That's altogether. Because yeah. we we were thinking of doing we actually planned last year. I'm sorry, Stefan Range. <laughs> uh, we we pulled out like a week before, but we were going to do the um, what's this mountain range here? Why the, the hex hex <laughs> hex over traverse. And then Hanley got um, glandular fever. Yeah, yeah. And then I got glandular yeah. fever like a week before we were going to start. And so we had to on track from that. But we were planning on doing it in four or five days, I think. And we thought we could do it faster because it's, I think it's about 90 kilometers. Yeah. But then we spoke to a couple of people in the mountain club and they were like, mm, the terrain is very, very different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, versus, you know, uh, KZN or Limpopo. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot easier to run that side because there are often like um, open tracks and like um, animal paths yeah. and, and things like that that you can run on. Yeah, I would I would say the Drakensberg is easier, but like Mapumalanga, it depends how high you are. Yes, yeah. Like above a certain height, it's grass, it, but below that, it's very vegetative. It's like and... that Lantana and you like get caught on your ankle, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a disaster. <laughs> how, yeah. how did you find places to go and adventure in when you were in Polanga? Because there's not a lot of information, like in the Cape, there's yeah. route guides and yeah. it's, it's very easy to find like well-known established routes. But especially in Pumalanga and Popo, we went there in December and you can't find like climbing spots yeah. and, unless you kind of spend time in that area. But if you're just going through quickly yeah, and yeah. you try and look for something, is it more just speaking to locals or how did you find? I would say, uh, yeah, it would be difficult if you're just passing through because mm. I spent two years there. So you, it's like a process. Yes. You get to know people, they know about the place, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, also a lot of Googling and then um, just... A lot of it was just like seeing a cool, so like for example, the one, um, actually you know Chris, um, yes. he had this mission of wanting to like climb over all the free rondovels oh, in nice. the canyon. So, I mean, that's just, we couldn't really find any information. Surely there, there are people that must have done it before, but mm. there's no, so that's just seeing something and deciding that you want to do that. But we, I never got further on our last attempt. On our first attempt, I was on ARVs. And I was like, no, I'm feeling fine. We can go on this hike where you bring the bash for forever. <laughs> and I was feeling so weak. Every time, like, because it's also a lot of rock, climbing over rocks and there was no path. And and then I get to, like, a rock that's maybe the height of my shins. And I'm standing here like, okay, you need to climb on this rock now. <laughs> and then... Climb on, okay, I top that out. Now I, I need to climb down. Oosh. It was like, I was so tired, but at that time I was also like, no, you just like, not that tired, you just, you're fine, so. Goodness. Was that, because when I met Hanley, mm. she, she was telling me we actually did um, Felix, Tra Felix Traverse yeah. together. Yeah. And um, she spoke about you. Uh, you had an accident in the hospital and, and poked yourself with a needle. Yeah. I don't want to downplay it. Yeah. And it sounded terrifying, but was that that time? Or? No, no. So that was that time you met. I was six year. So I also I was also in interviews in my final year exam, which was also <laughs> horrible Gosh. time because I remember that time also I could barely. We had like this 
before exam, final that thing, and I couldn't even. So when you're studying medicine, you have to stand quite a bit. Everything's like standing around someone's bed, and you it's like almost showing weakness if you want to sit down. Really? Or, but I mean, there's nowhere to sit down. There's mm. beds, and in Tigerberg, there's like this thing on the wall, like a a metal thing on the okay. side, like at this height. So we always sat on that, but mm. it's not comfortable. Really, or... it's like a pipe thing. So, I see. but anyways, so I could barely stand. I I almost fainted there, and I don't know. It was not a good time. I remember I was only eating jelly babies, and then <laughs> I puked jelly babies as well. Oh, no. It was like beautiful. Pu- <laughs> <laughs> All you the have to, the you have to cut the <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> right. But I don't know what my point was. Oh no, so that was that was while I was still yeah, but in an Osprey I'm not on little brick, so that was like another time I had to take IVs. What, what does it do to your... I mean, I, you don't have to go through the scientific yeah. sort of explanation, but I mean, are you just feeling run down all the time or...? Yeah, so things change a bit from that. So it's like... So you usually on three different medications for prophylaxis, but it's the one specific one, and there's actually a, a better replacement for it now. Oh, I see. Um, it's a bit more expensive, but like um, medical aids cover it now as okay. prophylaxis, and so it's much better now. Um, but it just makes you really tired, nauseous, um, kind of weak and. So what made you want to go and do the three round bowls? I don't know. I thought it's I that balance of <laughs> a doctor versus an but that, adventurer. Yeah, but so mm. that time we only got to like in front of the first round bowl, and then we kind of I was I was just going too slowly. I just couldn't keep it up. So I think Chris kind of noticed. He was like, "Okay, mm-hmm. let's just check it out and then come back another time." This is Chris from the Free State. Yes. Oh, he's. One of the best people to spend you in the You should interview with. him for your I podcast. I definitely want to. Yeah, he's one of the best navigation experts. I, I'm pretty sure you can call him an expert. Because he, he, yeah. worked as, uh, he, he worked on... Uh, I don't know what his profession is, but he did a lot of map work in Lesotho for a long time, scouting areas and plotting maps for companies, mining companies or something. Yeah, I, that's true. I should, if, I'm. I'm not actually. Sh- I should probably He's a chemist, to... actually. Really? So I don't know how that fits in, but they did I think do he that. Took a break and did yeah, something like that. Yeah. He he might have had a friend. I'm actually going to speak to him about that because we did that. Uh, and and I'd like to. If we can finish up after this. I, I know <laughs> you, this might be a bit long for you, but uh, we did an adventure race with him in Paris. Yeah. And you'd be running in the middle of the night, and it's like two o'clock in the morning. He got a map out. He looks at it for like two minutes and he's like, okay, cool, I've got it. And then you run for about 10 minutes and he says, look out for X. Yeah. And you're just running and then you spot and you're like, okay, Chris, I see. And then he looks up into the sky and he's like, all right, we're close to the, the, the this specific star. We've got to turn right. And we turn right, we look up and we're underneath the beacon for the adventure race. He's an incredible yeah. navigator. You guys had an interesting experience. Doing an adventure race together? Do, do you mind speaking about that? or is it Yeah, bit... no, no, I feel like the other day I was thinking about it and was like, I think I've like processed, processed it. it. <laughs> um, but it was quite t- tough when it happened. Um, no, we were doing adventure race in Swaziland mm-hmm. and we were only a team of two because, I don't know, it's quite difficult to make a team of four in adventure racing. It's difficult to get commitment from four yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then to try and maybe at least train together or and do compete. something together. Yeah. 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 And it's um, easier to compete as a couple versus a team yeah, of four. Because yeah. a team of four, those oaks are like hardcore adventurous. Yeah. Not that you guys aren't, but um, Handy and I, I mean, we our first adventure race, we won. But it was yeah. just a couple's adventure yeah. race. Um, also the Expedition Africa thing in Paris. Yeah. It was, it's easier because it's not as competitive yeah. as the, the professional yeah. teams. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, those teams that have like quite a few people, I think they kind of... Rotate can call them. up. I see. Yeah. I see. Um, but yeah, so we were actually, I think we were on like the run and then there was still a cycle, then that was the race was finished. It was like a 120k race. Okay. Um, so we were like on the second last leg. 
So it must have been quite early in the morning? Or? No, it was at night. It was like nine at night. Oh, really? Let me... Sure. So you guys were doing quite well if you were almost finished. Yeah. Hmm. When did we start? We started in the morning, I think. Yeah, they normally start at 11. Yeah, we started 12. in the morning. So I think there was like 30 or 40 k of cycling left after that. Okay. Um, But so we were just... I think we were like three to five k's from the checkpoint where you got your bike. Mm -hmm. um, and we were just, we were actually, I was really chilled. We were like walking and talking and trying to find, there was some turn that we had to like cross the river. Um, but we were just, it was like a normal, um, like it's a, a dirt gravel road, road, dirt okay. road. Um, so there were actually people hiding on the sides in the grass and I think they probably were checking out the teams in front of us. We, cause we were kind of, we were close to the front, but not like in the front. So mm -hmm. maybe we were the first team that kind of looked vulnerable. I cause see. everyone else I think was in teams, teams of four. Of four. Mm -hmm. Um, so they basically just jumped onto us from the sides. Um, when we were like, um, in between them and yeah, it was quite tough or oh, it's, I didn't immediately realize what was what going was on because yeah. no one thinks oh, I'm in a race now. Someone's gonna like if you if I was walking on my own in Switzerland in the night, I would have been like more aware <laughs> that something spray yes. out like that. Yeah, yeah, but now that. you mm. kind of have this false sense of security because yeah. you're in a race. Like mm. no one will attack you in a race. Sure. But um, so kind of they grabbed me. I think it was three guys and I had like two pangas and a knife and then. Chris managed to run away. I think it, his mind went into gears a bit quicker than mine. Yes. Um, and he said he was like running, and he someone was like running behind him, and I thought it was me. And then I looked around, and it was like one of the guys chasing him. So he, then he like stopped and turned around. Um, but they were just trying to get our stuff. Um, so like grabbing trying to pull my but it, i had like one of those running vests on so it's not just like okay. grabbing the back yeah. of it's like kind of stuck on mm -hmm. but anyways and yeah um chris what, i think um did did they not hit him with a panga because yeah he yeah was bleeding a bit yeah on. they no he went like that like i'm surrendering and then i hit him on his forearms but it wasn't deep, so I'm not sure if it was just very blunt or if it was just the wrong, wrong side, side of the panga. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's weird. I also had, I can't remember exactly what happened. Mm. I just remember that also hit me and I thought, it's like your your body and your mind's kind of in disconnect because I thought um, I was like stabbed. But then afterwards I'm like, no, I was just hit with something blunt. It wasn't like I, I was cut, mm. but I couldn't, um, like I couldn't read it in that moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the the one guy was threatening me with rape and that kind of thing. But then, luckily, I think maybe they just got scared because obviously other teams was also gonna come. Yeah. Um. So they just took our stuff. Um. And then. They want, Chris was like, no, just take my bag, please leave us alone. And then apparently, funny thing is, he was like taking off his, his um, headlamp also to give it to them. And then apparently I was like, no, please, you can't take my headlamp, I can't see you. <laughs> I can't like run away without it. And so they actually didn't keep his headlamp, oh, headlamp really? as well. Okay. So then we just ran away. Um, to but, the checkpoint or, or no well so we were now we didn't have a map or a map or a compass or anything so we we just ran like for the first i don't know five minutes we were just like running for our lives basically and and you run sub four minutes there i'm sure yeah and i, I don't make light of it because yeah. th that happened to us when we were 18 not exactly yeah. that, like that um, but we were stuck in a squash court yeah and as we were going out it was blowing off steam final matric exam yeah. myself and two friends uh they, they uh we got outside smashed our window with a nine mole pulled us into the squash courts tied us up e took all our clothes yeah. off threatened for hours to shoot us and all that stuff yeah. and then they left and they said we, they're going to come back to finish off the job they yeah. just need to go sell the car yeah so we broke out of the squash courts and we sprinted Ew. up in our underwear 
to the the uh, Cecil garage. Yeah. Got there completely naked. Must have looked yeah. weird. And uh, I remember running fairly quickly then as well. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yo, no, that's a rough. I've, I've been Yo. through that that last yeah. section when you kind of you don't know what's happening. You're trying to get away. Yeah. And you're coming up with a whole bunch of scenarios yeah. in your head, and you. Yeah. It, it, uh, it sounds horrible, but but sorry, carry on. Yeah, um, no. So we were just running, like down the road, but we now actually supposed to turn off at some point. To get but over then, the river. So, so at, I know at some point we stopped, and we're like, okay, what are we gonna do now? Because mm -hmm. we know we're close, but we don't know where to go. Yes. Um. So we kind of. There was a lady. There was a house. Um, and this lady just came out of the house, I think we shouted, and then she just kind of showed us, she just kind of pointed in the direction where she saw, like, the other teams go. Mm -hmm. So, then we found the bridge, because actually there was a, she had to find the bridge, otherwise she couldn't really cross. But then this random lady just came out of her house and she's like, go this way. Oh, really? She knew that... She, I think she just saw the other teams. The other athletes. Yeah. So we were running like really... I think we passed like, I don't know, five teams or something. <laughs> <laughs> we're just running past everyone. Oh, no. And they're just like, what's going on with these people? You didn't share anything with them or no, ask we, them for help or anything like that? I think we did tell some people, but mostly we just um, ran to the... Um, the checkpoint. checkpoint but i remember when we got there it was so weird because you feel i don't know what i don't know exactly what's going on but you're like so scared and freaked out and you feel like people can clearly see it but they can't because we got there and i mean chris is bleeding we got there and now this lady is like congratulating us like you guys are doing so well and we literally just stand there like not so we don't even know what to say we don't even have backpacks anymore you're supposed to have like this whole kit to you <laughs> we're just like and we're getting all this like wow because like, i don't know we ran out we ran ourselves into like i don't know fourth place or something <laughs> so, so goodness yeah that was weird but then i think we started talking so then they everyone realized. got freaked out yeah. and yeah and and how long did it take you to get the confidence to sort of go on adventures again and and has it made you a little bit more wary yeah no definitely it, it it's it's insane because i think i felt a lot of like it's difficult to deal with in the sense that okay nothing much happened to us like we're so lucky mm -hmm. and then you don't want to kind of you don't want to turn it and because you feel like and especially in south africa so many people go through so much more yeah worse things with worse so outcomes you and, and feel kind, of, kind of like like you shouldn't be feeling what you are feeling mm. or kind of guilty um yeah so it's it's difficult and also i don't know i experienced i don't know if you experienced it but i've I know it comes from a good place, but I feel like people keep kept on telling us how what we should have done to do it better, right? And to like escape and to like not give up our things and like why didn't you fight? Why didn't you scream? Mm. Why didn't you talk to them until the next team comes? Why didn't you run faster? Like, and I know it's yeah, like I said. I, it's not from a malicious place, but mm. if people keep on saying this thing, this thing, that's what you're like, okay, I don't know why, why didn't I realize that I was... Yeah, until yeah. you're in that situation, you don't know how you're going to react. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunately happened, sorry, he's looking for attention. <laughs> um, Go look for Leia. Um, but until until you're in that situation, it's, it's, it's happened to me two or three times, unfortunately, in those kinds of situations. Yeah. Uh, we were cycling to Hot Tobias Put Dam from Joburg once, and we were about 40, 50 k's into the cycle, and two guys jumped out of the bush with nine moles and yeah. also stole everything from yeah. us. And we flagged a car down, and I phoned a friend of mine to come pick us up. But you know, people people will often say, "Okay, but they would never shot at you, so why yeah. don't you just carry on cycling?" Yeah. And your brain switches off during those times, and you you have one of two. I think everyone says you either yeah. you have a flight of, or, or fight yeah. mode, and you never know what the best way of reacting is until you're in that situation 
clearly the best way of reacting was the way that you reacted because you're still here. Yeah. And and that's the most important thing. And um, you know, I think often, it, hopefully, especially in the outdoors, it's more a opportunistic thing yeah, as yeah. opposed to like a house in uh, in Brock or yeah. you know, where someone goes out of their way to break into your home yeah. at night. Yeah. Two very different situ yeah. situations. I mean, having grown up in Limpopo, that's happened to us. Um, someone's just walked into a house in the middle of the night and, and stolen stuff out of the yeah. house. And those are very different situations to an outdoor environment where you're running and it's an opportunistic kind of yeah. theft. So you hope that those kinds of interactions do lead uh, to just taking the stuff and then leaving Yeah, out. And supposedly. It's, <laughs> supposedly. Yeah. And it's horrible that it's happening more now so than... than and I think it will, uh, with the pandemic, a lot of people have lost their jobs and yeah, will become a yeah. lot more desperate. Uh, I saw a couple of posts this morning, one lady even on LinkedIn, it's like my husband's just been mugged in Pretoria in the middle of the day, uh, uh, in Pretoria Street, yeah. which is like a well-known busy area. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't make things easier when you're going through those experiences and then people are telling you how yeah, you should have reacted. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just how you reacted was the right way because, like yeah. I said... But what's also scary, because I realized, like, it did affect me a lot afterwards. Mm. Um, I remember the first time I went running, I started running, and then I ended up running at, like, sprinting speed, because I just felt like someone was chasing me, mm. and also, like, dodging everyone on the side of the street, that side of the street. Yeah. And even, like something i don't know it's so stupid but like i had a top on from cotton on mm -hmm. so then i went back into the cotton i think that top was stolen for some reason yeah anyways i let i lost that top with the the um whole situation mm -hmm. then i went back into the same cotton on where i bought it and i just started crying and i couldn't mm. and it's like it doesn't even make sense no. but it's how your body reacts and how your mind reacts to these kinds of situations. I'm sure psychologists yeah. could probably explain it to us better, but I had a similar experience. I mean, we had, uh, my dad and I used to play golf when I was young. Yeah. And uh, the guy who used to caddy for my dad um, would work, my dad in a music shop as well, so he'd work for my dad. And I knew him as a very well-known, recognizable face in my life. Yeah. But he reminded me of the guys that mugged us. Yeah. I had similar facial features. And I... I mean, I didn't say anything to I, I just moved behind my dad. We were walking in the mall and we saw him. I just kind of moved behind my dad. Yeah. My dad's not a very big guy. He's quite <laughs> short. Uh, so I kind of cowered behind him. And I just started shaking uncontrollably. Yeah. So it's weird how your body reacts and your mind reacts to those kinds of yeah. situations after it happens. But I'm glad you're still here with us. <laughs> um, I know I'm not making light of the situation. It couldn't have been nice. But I, 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 I do appreciate you sharing that, that story with us, because it's not something easy to go through, I'm sure. Yeah, no, ugh, I couldn't really talk about it for a long time. Oh, okay. Um, like, yeah, but now it's kind of like a story I can tell. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just made me realize, like, how much so many people, like, is going through, because if, like, that affected me so much. Um, yeah. How other, other things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, well, but, I'm, I really, you know, I hope that uh, you, you get back out into the mountains and do these adventure races again, because they're a lot of fun. Um, yeah, they did, are. You didn't take part in the Madagascar or the Reunion Islands no, one? No, no. Because Dieter, a friend of ours, did that. Yeah, um, that time I was like still in a moon pit. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. He asked us to, to do it and we really wanted to, but it's, it's, it's quite a pricey thing to do yeah. as well. So we had to watch our finances during that time. But, yeah. But definitely something that I want to do again. Yeah, me too. Mm. I like, it's not that I'm not scared to do adventure races. Mm. It's more like punk us also bring me <laughs> out. <laughs> I can imagine for good reason. Yeah, yeah. And just, it's difficult. I find it difficult now to, to if I see someone on a trail, I like mm -hmm. kind of have a moment of like, pause and what should I do now, mm. run past them, run back, yes. uh, yeah. Yona, I think these kinds of things happen far too regularly, but not as often as 
people think. I mean, the, yeah. the trails are, you know, relatively safe. A lot of people, um, you know, uh, put a lot of attention and care into hiking in bigger groups and, you know, don't go running by yourself, uh, apart from the obvious dangers of slipping and falling yeah. and not having anyone to phone. Yeah. Uh, you know, be wary in the mountains. Yeah. They are special, but you know, they do come with dangers, often human and... Uh, yeah, you know. I think there's still a lot of places, okay, you should probably shouldn't go on your own mm. there. But the more remote places, I mean like Cedarberg, I would feel um, safe completely too. safe. Mm. Even like Junkershu, because there's like entry... Permits that you have to yeah, get to get in. Yeah, Table that Mountain is just like, okay, now I'm talking about something else, but like Table Mountain is just different because anyone could go but and it's in the city. Didn't you, Hanley told me that you went running up Table Mountain, I plowed a clip in the yeah, middle of the... Yeah, I also had a situation there. In the middle of the, probably like four o'clock in the morning, because it was still dark, so four or five in the morning? I, I think or? it was later, I think it was just before sunrise, but yeah, I just got a bad feeling, because um, people, there was a guy that asked me, where's my dog, that I went past, and then he started chatting at people that's higher up. I see. And then they started putting on lights and stuff, and they started coming down. So I kind of felt like they were trying to trap me. Yes. Um, but I didn't know what they were saying because they were um, speaking another language. But then I, I turned around and started going down. And then when I got back to the guy that I went past, I kind of stopped and kind of looked at him. And he also stopped. It, that was also, I was like, why is he stopping when I was mm. talking? Why isn't he just walking past me like a normal person? Mm. Um, so that time, like, flight mode kicked in. I just started, like, running off the trail into the bossa. Where did you finish up? Because I need to tell the story, and I'm like, how is this possible? Because you have had to do trail climbing. I went through. from... So, oh, that was on Planet Clip. I ended up on India Fence <laughs> there. <laughs> and how far up were you? Do you remember? So, I had to go down a bit to be yeah. able to... But above the contour path. So you yeah, mean... yeah, I was way above the contour path. <laughs> so you definitely did some sort of climbing route. I, I know I had a lot, I had a lot of like... Um, scrambling. Scrambling, yeah. Oh, um, goodness. But even on that part where I was still like next to... So I immediately went off the trail. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I went down quite a bit. But I was just like jumping down... And like grabbing onto trees. <laughs> yeah, um, it's funny what you do when you're scared. <laughs> yep. And then I got on India Fence and then there was this guy. And when I saw him, I just started crying because there was an obvious hiker. Yes. Um, and then he's he's like not believing me. That, <laughs> that like, just come from Platypus. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, uh, okay, what's wrong if you like walk, continue on. So, yeah. Hi. But I think everyone, if you spend enough time out there, you'll like run into these kind of situations. Yeah, unfortunate thing. But I, yeah. I do appreciate you sharing those scary stories. You were very scared, to, not scared, but nervous of doing the podcast. Yeah. I, I appreciate that you did it. And I think it turned out yeah. really well. You, you shared Let's some interesting see. stories and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you um, for having me. <laughs> absolutely. You're a special person in my life and Hanley's life and the, your dance family's life. And I appreciate you and your adventures. And all the best yeah. with your... How long have you still got with uh, at the hospital? Um, like six weeks. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. Stay thank safe. Thank you. Um, thank you for all the hard work that you're doing. I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure you, you feel proud to, 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 to do this kind of work. Yeah, and, I know. Yeah, stay safe. Thank you.